So what if I told you that you only need two things to own less, but those two things aren't actual physical things? Or what if I also said that I can guarantee that you will be well on your way to an abundant life with less if you practice these two things? Well, the first thing you need is courage. And the second thing you need, well, the second thing also starts with the letter C. But we'll talk about that one here in a minute. Now, when it comes to courage, the first question that's probably running through your mind right now is what does courage have to do with minimalism and owning less? And the short answer is everything, right? And that's because it takes courage to swim against the current. I'll say it again. It takes courage to swim against the current. And really, really, this is great life advice in general that can help you a ton on your journey, right? So take it for what it is. Take it at face value. Courage. It takes courage to swim against the current. But see, in this world, in this modern society in which we live, the norm is to consume, right? And to consume a lot, <laughs> Uh, especially during this time of the year. You know, this week we have Thanksgiving coming up and then Black Friday and Cyber Monday and then Christmas. It's not too far behind that. So it's safe to say that there's going to be a ton of consumption happening all over the place this next month or two, right? And that's the norm, right? But see, it doesn't take courage to follow what everyone else has decided to do or what society has conditioned us to believe as normal or to accept as normal. It doesn't take courage to do those things. Right, which is why it's so, 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 so important that we learn how to swim against the current. And I'm not gonna lie to you, <laughs> uh, swimming against the current is not an easy thing to do. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. And I don't want it to sound like it's an easy thing to do because it's not. Swimming against the current is going to challenge you. There's going to be some frustrations. There's going to be some resistance there. You're going to wonder. You're going to have some questions. I still have questions. Right. And, you know, maybe you don't have someone in your circle, in your immediate circle, who is also swimming against the current that you can have these type of conversations with and bounce ideas off of and navigate this new path together. Maybe you don't have someone in your circle who is doing that, who is swimming against the current. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so, so, so passionate about this conversation, because I am someone who is swimming against the current, who has swum against the current. Uh, for most of my life since I've started this journey. And I want to be that person for you that you can turn to and have these conversations with, bounce ideas off of, use as encouragement or motivation to help you swim against the current. Because it's not an easy thing to do. And it's always, it's always easier to do something that's not easy to do when you can do it with other people who are also motivated and encouraged to do the same thing that you want to do, if that makes sense. So when it comes to swimming against the current and having courage, I remember at the very beginning of my journey, when I first started sharing that I was practicing minimalism publicly, I was extremely nervous to do so. I remember the first time I mentioned it in a YouTube video here on this YouTube channel, how awkward that felt. Because I knew that people who knew me in real life were looking at me like minimalism, right? There's nothing about your life that's minimalist. <laughs> And they're right. My life was cluttered in all aspects, physically, mentally, emotionally, digitally, spiritually, all of it, right? I was cluttered from A to Z. <laughs> but I had the courage to push through that anyway, to swim against the current, knowing that people who knew me personally didn't necessarily agree with minimalism, could think that I could achieve minimalism, was wondering what I was doing. But I knew that this was the path I needed to be on. And that this path would bring me clarity in my life, would bring me confidence in my life. And I needed the courage in order to do that. So I definitely want to encourage you to swim against the current, to have courage on this journey, because you need courage in order to own less in your life. Now, the second C that you need, right? The second thing you need is consistency. But consistency in regards to what, right? And what I mean by that is you need to consistently spend less money every month, every week, and every day, right? You need to consistently spend less money. 
If you want to own less in your life, you have to buy less. You have to want less. You have to consume less. And that involves changing your lifestyle and changing how much money you spend on a monthly basis. Now, some things that my wife and I have done to help us navigate personal finances is we started tracking our finances regularly, tracking our spending, how much we're spending every month, what we're spending our money on. We budget consistently every month. We have financial dates where we sit down and have conversations about money, about our finances about the goals we have for our finances. And we're constantly keeping our money at the forefront of our relationship. So that way we're clear exactly what we're doing, where our money is going, and we're consistently spending less every month. Because if you spend less, if you want less, you're going to own less. Just the way it is, right? Now you also need to consistently declutter the things you don't need every month, every week, and every day. Now I've shared uh, tons of decluttering tips throughout all of my videos, right? And there are tons of different techniques that I also talk about in my Clutter to Clarity Starter Kit course as well. But the main decluttering technique that my wife and I use, especially nowadays, is something that I call declutter as you live, right? And this is when you just naturally go through your regular routines of life. You get dressed how you normally would. You eat breakfast how you normally would. You go to work or start your day. You work out how you normally would. And as you go through this routine, when you come across items that you don't need in your life, when you come across relationships that aren't serving you, when you come across something that you forgot you owned, but you know you don't need, you donate it, you throw it away, or you give it away right then and there, right? So my wife and I, we keep a garbage bag by our bedroom closet as we're getting dressed. If we come across something that is worn out, something that we don't want, something that we haven't worn in quite a while, it goes right into that bag. No questions asked. So we're consistently decluttering every day because it's a part of our lifestyle. It's a part of our routine. It's a part of what we're doing every day, right? Now, the next thing you got to do when it comes to consistency is you have to consistently manage your time on social media. Believe it or not, you become what you consume. And if you're constantly consuming things on social media or in the media that is encouraging you, trying to convince you that you need more in your life, whether that's to feel good enough, to be accepted, to uh, reach a certain status, then those are the things you want to be extremely mindful of, right? So watch who you're following, watch who you listen to, watch what you listen to, and how those messages and those people are affecting your life, both positively and negatively, and definitely in terms of how you're choosing to live your life when it comes to owning less, and minimalism, and being intentional. Now, the next thing you got to do is you have to be consistent or you have to consistently curate your relationships. Believe it or not, everyone that we meet in life is either in our life for a season or a reason. A season or a reason. And you also get a few a few real friends in a lifetime, just a few. But the majority of people are in your life for a season or a reason. And it's up to us to take a step back and curate our relationships. Sometimes we hold on to certain relationships far too long. Toxic relationships way too long or relationships that We're concerned about what they may think if we are starting to outgrow that relationship. And it's up to us to really take a step back, like I said, and say, you know what? What's best for me? What is going to help me achieve the things that I want to achieve in my life? And what's going to help me become the best version of myself? That person who has less clutter and more clarity. That person who can enjoy life while staying absolutely true to themselves. What is going to help me? Who is going to help me live that life? Right. Again, this all goes back to the idea of swimming against the current, doing what most people are not doing, what again, what's against the norm. Right. And curating your relationships, decluttering your relationships is not a normal thing. Most people don't do that. Most people hold on to relationships longer than they need to. So I really want to encourage you to take a step back, look at your relationships, uh, decide who you're interacting with and are those people adding value to your life or not adding value to your life. And start to separate yourself from those who are not adding value to your life, from those who are distracting you from what you want to achieve in your life, and from those who are encouraging you to swim with the current rather than against the current. Now, the last thing you need to do in regards to consistency is you need to consistently carry the right mindset. Now, mindset is everything because what you think becomes what you believe, and what you believe becomes who you are. And if you want to be someone who is living an abundant life with less, who is enjoying their life with less clutter and more clarity, who can stay absolutely true to themselves, 
who can swim against the current with all the confidence in the world, then you have to have the right mindset. Because if everything up here is messed up, everything out here will be messed up as well. Make sure you have the right mindset. Keep growing in your journey. Keep learning. Always stay true to you, no matter what you do in life, no matter where you go in life, no matter what circumstances you face in life. Make sure that you are always staying true to you. Also, I'm curious to know, how are you enjoying these more laid back, more candid podcast style type of conversations? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.